Hi, and welcome to Wrenching Up, where we tackle the problems and demonstrate the procedures that you, our viewers, ask us to do. We have two great projects today. One involves 12 volt batteries, flat plate AGM 12 volt batteries, because today's vehicles have so much electronics on there, this new technology is actually important and we need to know how to deal with that. Another project we have is an F-150 Ford truck. In fact, it's on the way here now, and it'll be here very shortly. And it's got a P0401, you know, a DPFE issue that we've got to solve. And we've got a great shortcut to help you break rate and solve a problem like that very quickly. So let's get started. Well, if you're like me, you've probably heard a lot about this flat plate AGM technology and 12 volt batteries. Not the spiral technology, the flat plate AGM technology. And maybe why it's so important on today's automobiles. So, Mike Holson from JCI is with us today from Johnson Controls Corporation. Wow, Mike, look at all this stuff. What have you got for us? You talked about the spiral cell AGM battery and the Optima brand, and uh, we also have now the flat plate. And the flat plate's gonna give us a lot more options in, in today's cars. So as cars have evolved over the years and our driving habits have changed as well, there's been more demand on, on the battery. So you know, one, you know, one example is you know, smartphones. We have all these apps on our smartphones and they're very power draining. Well, the same things in today's cars. We have a lot of computers and sensors and they demand a lot of power and it puts a lot of stress on the battery. Now this one behind you, this van has got tons of electronics in there, uh, power everything, not to mention the electronics that control the computers and the sensors and the actuators, all drawing power from this vehicle's battery. And even when the vehicle is off, those computers are still on, aren't That's they? That's correct. So th th that is a drain on the electrical system. And then we have this Toyota here, which it looks like a standard automobile, but again, this is a very uh, power demanding car as well. And then you throw in some of the aftermarket plug-in devices we have like cell phones and navigation systems and even DVD players. And that adds to the stress on the electrical system. Not to mention today's aftermarket music systems and things that are so popular that people want to add on to their vehicles. Wow, it's no wonder that we need more power and really a better technology. How does it work? Well, we're all familiar with the standard flooded battery where we have free acid in it. And that uses a separator material between the positive and negative plates. It's a microporous uh, piece of material. But in the absorbed glass mat, the AGM battery, we use a material, a poly uh, fiberglass material that absorbs the electrolyte and keeps it suspended. And then those cells are compressed so the, the plates are in constant contact with that moist separator. Together? Like Correct. That. Okay. So the advantage that, that gives you is that compression gives the ability of that battery to go through many cycles. So when you have high electrical demand and that battery is constantly in a state of discharge and recharge, that battery is going to give you up to two times more life than a standard battery. Well, I've looked at some TSBs lately that has something to do with monitoring the current or limiting the current while charging some of these flat plate AGM batteries. Uh, Toyota Prius comes to mind as an example. So how are we going to deal with this? Well, uh, in the vehicle, you know, the charging systems have developed, but you know, we've, we've got several chargers out there in the market that, that can do AGM technology. Optima's come out with a, a charger that, one, uses continuous current and continuous voltage, which helps get a higher state of charge into that battery. Uh, one of the nice advantages about AGM batteries is they're very efficient for recharging. We find that a lot of battery chargers can never really get them past that 80%. Right, you can't get that extra 20% in there, and I guess this is going to help solve it that. It really issue. will. Yeah, there's this, this technology uses microprocessors and temperature control, and this is the maintainer that Optima has out now. And they also have a full charger for it out as well. So this will not only help you when that battery starts reaching those higher resistance points in the charging cycle, it'll help you get through those and get a higher state of charge but also it'll monitor that temperature so you don't, you don't have problems with overcharging or getting the heat from that overcharge. This is exactly what we've been needing. Uh, can we do it here? Show us how it works. Absolutely. So this battery charger gives us the ability to pick the type of battery technology we're gonna charge. Since today we're using a, a Yellow Top Optima, we're just gonna select the Yellow Top Optima symbol here. And now the, the charger will go into an analysis mode. So it'll check the condition of the battery which will determine the type of charge that the battery requires. Now that the analysis has been completed on the battery, it's now going into the, ch the charging cycle. And you can see at uh, this point the display showing that the battery already hit is at 75% state of charge. So it's gonna charge this battery to get it up to 100% uh, state of charge. 
Wow, thanks, Mike. I feel so much better about how to service this flat plate AGM technology. But what does our future look like? Well, the future is really right now. I mean, we have a lot of power demanding vehicles out there right now, and our driving habits are continuing to evolve. So this is a great upgrade option to, for our customers. But by 2015, start-stop technology will be roughly 27% of all new cars. And that's only going to continue to grow. We have a PO401 code, DPFE issues. And here to help me out with that, I have Philip from BWD. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. So what do we need? Well. We need a visual inspection of this vehicle. All right. As we conduct a visual inspection, we want to make the best use of all time. So we're going to hook up the smoke machine. Okay. Because that would expose any leaks that are associated with the related parts of the DPFE system. Okay, makes sense. Okay. Oh, there's our smoke. Yep. And let's get that in the booster line. Okay. Now basically, we want to give this some time to go through the whole system and you could look at multiple components that's related to the DPFE uh, system, such as the vacuum regulator. Okay. And if we take off this hose, and if the vacuum regulator is not working properly, meaning stuck open, yeah. we will see smoke. So okay. let's see. All right. As you can see here, smoke is coming out of the vacuum port going to the EGR valve. That should not be on. It should be in the closed position. Right. It should only open after the computer has energized that solenoid and the computer okay. has not energized that solenoid. So that's one of the things that we may want to replace along with the DPFE. And when we're replacing the DPFE, we want to make sure that we inspect the lines as well. You notice the corrosion buildup around the DPFE and the hoses? That sign of carbon buildup uh, on the exhaust tubes. Okay, so we're done with the smoke. Let's okay, get this out of here. so now we are aware of what we need to do. Here are the components that we're working with that we will want to consider with this for DPFE type system. This system has been around for a very long time and it's designed to help the computer know how many exhaust gases or how much exhaust gases is flowing through the system using a vacuum regulator that we would have to replace. Okay. And the main thing is the hose kit that connects to the Ford DPFE sensor itself. What's so special about those hoses? What's special about these hoses, they're an upgrade from the OE design. As you can see, the interior hose is made of a, a much stronger a material in order to last longer. Okay. Because as you can see with the hoses that's been on this right. car for over 100,000 yeah. miles, has deteriorated. So they will not have that problem after you replace okay. with the TechSmart hose okay. kit. And with the upgraded DPFE sensor, the technology that's in designed in the sensor will last much longer than all we design. Okay. And it comes with tech notes in the box, helping the technician understand that there's a voltage range at idle that should be 0.8 to 1.2 volts. So that when he tests the sensor, he should test and look for that voltage Just range. Just to verify for that. Just okay. to verify. Cool. Yep. All right, well, let's get this installed and get it down the road. Sounds good. All right. Hey, what are you doing? We're all done, it's time to go home. No, we still have one more project to do, this. Hey Jim. Hey Chris, how you doing? Good, look what I brought you. <laughs> that is just what I need. This little roaster's got some ignition issues. It's basically running out of spark in the mid to high end, and I was thinking of an HEI coil to take care of that, and then we'll kind of go from there. Would you like to help me out? Sure, we can take care of this. Oh man, put that stuff on the workbench and let's get started. Okay, sounds great. Oh, there's the issue, Chris. It's got the original equipment type of a coil in there. Right, and with this simple Excel upgrade, we'll have no problem getting more energy out of it. Yeah, and I think what we need to do is to get that coil replaced so we can get more spark energy. But these, this little engine is healthy at higher RPMs, and we want to get that energy up higher in the RPM range, right? Right, and with the Excel coil starting at 3,600 RPM, you're going to see 56% more energy. That's a lot of energy, 56% more energy. And you know, a coil like that can produce not only high voltage, high energy, but it can move that energy up the RPM scale. And I want to show you how that works. These are the laminations called E-bar laminations inside of an HEI coil. And what I want you to look at is this air gap right here. By controlling the width of that air gap, we can control where the spark energy will occur up and down the RPM scale. And also by controlling this width, we can control uh, cold weather starting issues as well. 
So besides uh, manipulating the E-gap, having a great turn ratio, good insulation, this new HEI coil is going to solve the spark issue, and some uh, brand new plugs are going to help too. And this is the little carbon brush, the insulator, and we will have to lube this insulator as we put the new coil in. And don't forget the ground strip. Yeah, just what I thought, Chris, that's really foul. Okay, the plug on the right is the plug we just took out of this T-bucket. And you can see that's really fouled out and needs replaced. The plug on the left is one of Excel's C-cut plugs. Now, if you look at the ground strap, the ground strap is actually cut to the center of the electrode, which gives it more spark going out into the cylinder. Well, Chris, we've got the new coil in, which takes care of our energy problem in the upper RPM range. We needed that. And, of course, the new plugs, which were followed, we needed those to keep this idle better. I'm a little concerned, though, about getting this energy to the new plugs with these old wires. So, you know, what do you think? Well, Jim, when you called me about this T-bucket, I knew I had a set of headers on it, which creates a lot of heat around the spark plug. Yeah. And not only does Excel solve that with a ceramic booted wire, but it's also going to give us new wire to solve your energy issue. Ceramic? It's wow. a ceramic boot wire. Yeah, it's actually made out of ceramic and it handles up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is great. Let's get them on. Well, that takes care of that. Thanks for making those wire sets for us, Chris. That's going to help a lot. Well, Tim, thank you for the invite. I appreciate it. You're welcome here anytime. And I'm going to go take this for a little spin. See you next time.